This video topic was selected by our backers on Patreon. In return for their donations, they get to take part in votes like this, and access to exclusive videos like our recent TLDR political pumpkin carving competition. There's a trailer for that at the end of this video. Online abuse. It's not an easy thing to discuss or even raise, but it's sadly on the rise. From harassment to death threats, more and more people are being subjected to abuse. And in the wake of the killing of Sir David Amos, the MP for South End West, discussion has turned to combating at least part of the problem by banning online anonymity. So in this video, we'll take a look at the wider background to the idea, how it could actually be implemented, and what it may mean to you on a day-to-day -day basis. Talk about tackling online anonymity is far from anything new. As the use of social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter rose and the likes of VPNs proliferated, it has become incredibly easy to create an online profile on these sites with fake details and thus incredibly easy to torment people without facing consequences. So much so that the model, Katie Price, appeared before a Commons Petitions Committee to highlight the issue of online trolling directed at her disabled son, Harvey, back in July of 2020, before going on to launch a petition on the government's website calling to make it a legal requirement when operating a new social media account to provide a verified form of ID. The petition went on to garner close to 700,000 signatures, passing both the 10,000 signature threshold for a government response and the 100,000 signature threshold for a debate in Parliament. As required, when the petition passed the first threshold, the government responded back in May, stating that restricting all users' right to anonymity by introducing compulsory user verification for social media could disproportionately impact users who rely on anonymity to protect their identity. Anonymity underpins people's fundamental right to express themselves and access information online in a liberal democracy. Recently, however, many MPs and senior members of the government, including the Home Secretary Priti Patel, have begun talking about banning online anonymity. When asked whether she would consider removing the right to online anonymity, the Home Secretary stressed that, I want us to look at everything, and there is work taking place already. This recent shift in attitude is largely due to the unfortunate and brutal killing of Sir David Amos, the second serving MP to be killed in the space of five years. Such a brutal attack has opened many's eyes to the issue of safety, both in the flesh and online. After the murder of Labour MP Joe Cox five years ago, Operation Bridger was established to beef up security for MPs in their homes and offices, but very minimal changes were done across the board, and the issue of online abuse, an issue raised by MPs of all political persuasions, was not directly tackled. Jade Botterill, a former parliamentary advisor to MP Yvette Cooper, stressed that death threats against politicians have become normalised. At one stage, she reported over 100 death threats in a week directed at Cooper and her fellow staff members. Sir Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House of Commons, revealed that he had received a car bomb threat from an anonymous account based abroad, stressing on the topic of anonymity that if it was up to me and I was in charge of legislation, I would have done something. Sir David himself, in his recent book Eyes and Ears, A Survivor's Guide to Westminster, highlighted how he'd been frequently abused online and how ignorant cowards could remain anonymous, arguing that the law in this regard needs to be changed and updated as a matter of urgency. In July this year, a YouGov survey polled adults in the UK on their opinions to identity online. 37% agreed that everyone should have to display their real identity on their profile, 41% that everyone should have to disclose their real identity to the social network when signing up, but don't have to display it on their profile, with just 11% saying that everyone should be able to use social networks without having to display or disclose their real identity online. Technically speaking, not disclosing your real identity online, when asked, tends to be in breach of the terms of service of most services, and in some cases, existing UK law. As fake accounts breach platform terms and conditions, under the terms of the Computer Misuse Act, you are likely to be gaining unauthorised access to computer material, something that carries a maximum jail time of two years. The trouble is that most fake accounts are relatively innocuous. For example, sending yourself coins in your favourite mobile game or maybe a private Twitter rant account. So, the police simply don't have the time, money or desire to chase up on them. 
And for the crimes they do wish to pursue, like actual harassment and abuse, it can take huge amounts of resources to uncover the genuine owner of an account, by which point standing behind a fake account is more of an aggrieving factor than a main offence. Now, there are a number of issues with mandating verified IT to access services, most of which the government actually acknowledged in its response to Katie Price's petition. Access to ID, security, VPNs and vulnerable people. Starting with ID, quite simply, not everyone has it. Data from the Electoral Commission points to 3.5 million people in the UK lacking access to a valid and current photo ID, i.e. more than 5% of the population. In regards to security, you'll suddenly have social network platforms having to develop secure systems to upload, verify and manage the likes of passport details. That being said, the UK does already have a system for verifying your identity online, gov.uk verify. Of course, the system is currently limited to government services, say your tax accounts or driving licence, but it could potentially be extended out to the public. The trouble with that would be introducing a single point of failure into the system, with the Verify servers likely to be a prime candidate for attack. When it comes to VPNs, none of the major social networks are based or even solely accessible from the UK. If the UK were to implement mandatory ID checks and say the US didn't, anyone could route their connection through the US and get round the requirement. As the government's original response to Katie Price's petition highlighted, introducing compulsory user verification could disproportionately impact users who rely on anonymity to protect their identity. But the government's response actually goes on to list some of the people adversely affected, including young people exploring their gender or sexual identity, whistleblowers, journalist sources and victims of abuse. Introducing a new legal requirement would force these users to disclose their identity and increase risk of harm to their personal safety. Back in 2019, digital identity expert David Birch proposed a tiered approach to identity verification to tackle some of the privacy concerns. Specifically, each account would have a is a person attribute, the default being no. When you first sign up for an account on Twitter or Facebook, you're assumed to be fake. You would then be directed to authenticate with a trusted third party, say the bank. Your bank would then send a token saying, yes, this person is real and a customer of mine, changing the is a person attribute to known. Crucially, at this stage, it wouldn't say anything about which customer, just that this person does exist. Users could leave their account at this level of authentication, or choose to go further and get verified as a specific person. This would then change the is a person attribute to verified and get that highly coveted blue tick. Users could then filter the content on their feeds based on authentication, e.g. I only want to see and interact with known and verified accounts on Twitter. In any case, removing online anonymity wouldn't stop abuse outright. Much of the abuse online is not from anonymous accounts. Following the Euro 2020 final, a number of players in the English team were subject to racist abuse online, and in particular on Twitter. Following the incident, Twitter removed some 1,961 tweets and suspended a number of accounts, 99% of which were not anonymous. It would, however, ensure that any abusers would be fully identifiable and remove the perception of invincibility. The issue, nonetheless, seems to be implementation. Finding something that works whilst also protecting the fundamental right for people to express themselves online. But what do you think? What can and should be done? Would you be happy to verify your identity online? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. What happens when the TLDR team are randomly assigned politicians and then forced to carve them into pumpkins? Well, the TLDR first annual political pumpkin carving competition, obviously. See if you can guess whose face they are and watch the madness unfold. Get access to this video exclusively on Patreon for the hauntingly low price of $5 a month, along with tons of other perks. This might actually be the first thing that I think the patrons will enjoy. <laughs> <laughs>
The link to that is in the description.